Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Oh, welcome back to another episode. I'm excited for this one. And for those of you listeners of the show, subscribers, first of all, thank you. But second of all, I finally have a real intro to the show, which I'm excited about. So hopefully you like it. Drop it in the comments. Um, but no, today we have a super fun episode lined up. I'm excited for it. And we have another, which is crazy to me, it blows my mind international guest, which I'm just, I'm so blessed to talk to amazing people. Um, so I'm going to try her name here. Burju. Did you're I say very, it right? You're very close. Oh, please correct me and then introduce yourself to the show before I screw it up again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you so much, Brandon, for having me. I love entering international shows, especially the ones in the US, because I lived in the US for four years. That's my second home. So my name is Burjo. And don't worry, most of the Americans couldn't say it. I lived in four years. As I said, nobody could get it in a correct way. So <laughs> don't worry. Well, I would like to apologize for all of my country mates because we're just, we're awful. We are God awful at yeah. all things. <laughs> name pronunciations, uh, coffee, as we talked about, as we're going to get into in just a few minutes here on this show. Um, so yes, thank you for being here. I'm really excited for this. And the conversation today, the topic is unlocking your authentic self, which is in terms of the harmonious architecture and what we talk about on this show, I always say this is the mind body business show. You can't be an effective business leader and owner and entrepreneur without first harnessing your mind and your body. And I think we're going to step over the lines here between all three. So I'm really, really excited to dive in. So tell me, first of all, what is unlocking your true self, your true authentic self? And how do you do that for people in the world? So first, I want to add soul in your mind body business uh, conversation, because without soul, we can do nothing. And that's a lot with my mission and my passion. I work with soul. I sometimes call myself soulpreneur. And unlocking your authentic self is something that everyone has to do because we have our, our child inside of us, which is us, our authentic self, our, our true self. And over the time when we grow up, when we are raised by social norms or our parents, our teachers, our society, they all taught us certain things. They all put us in a certain frame, like we are in a frame right now in the show. And lots of society rules are taught to us. And with those rules and frames, we cannot be ourselves. We are trying to put on mask in different roles that we have. We have the, the business role, we have the, the parent role, maybe if you have a children, we have the spouse role, we have the, the role of the society when we are in public, like we are trying to fit in everywhere. And sometimes we feel stuck and desperate and lack confidence when we can't be our true self. And that's what I do, what my company called Joy do. We help people to unlock their authentic self in their personal and professional life through digital marketing consulting and professional coaching by using neurolinguistic programming in it, integrating NLP processes in both scenarios for personal and professional growth. And to me, authenticity is so important because everything on the news, on social media, everywhere has this certain frame, certain looking, 
first of all, certain looking for women, certain looking for men, certain things for business, certain things for being a parent or having a social life. And when we see those, we hide our authentic self and we are afraid to show it because we are afraid that we cannot be accepted like how we were in our childhood. We were changing our habits to be accepted in those cool groups like and this is the same even though we grow up we are still trying to fit in yeah that's that's interesting because it's we're fitting in to boxes that we have made in our own heads right like we we put other people in boxes so we can compartmentalize our lives and and organize things into memories and and function but then we try to put ourselves in boxes and that's where the inauthenticity comes in. So I think something that's really interesting about you and your company is you said digital marketing, you have a digital marketing agency, but you help people become their or unlock their authentic self. That's a combination I typically don't hear about. I think a lot of people don't hear that combination. So which came first for you? Was it the passion to unlock people's authentic selves or was it the marketing and then you found a way to merge the two first was my journey my own journey because i was in that nine to five world and in that social norms in my home country i'm originally from turkey and currently i live in hungary and i grew up with those social norms i'm sure most people who are listening to us and yourself included brandon correct me if i'm wrong we are born and raised with these rules like you have to have a certain degree from a great university you have to have the certain job like the guaranteed job and then once you get the job you have to find your soulmate and then you have to get married and then you have to have kids and then you have to send your kids to the best school and you know, it just never stops. There's always expectations from society on your own life, which is crazy to me. Like nobody can tell you what to do, what's next. And I was following those rules until the age of 25. I did everything. I graduated from a great university, also finished one term earlier than my peers, got a great job in an international company and learned everything in human resources department. And then one day I realized I am not doing what I love, what I meant to do in this life. And I am not me most of mostly. I, I love bringing joy to the environment. I love smiling. I love you know, laughing and inspiring people. Even in that nine to five job, I was in a motivational group leader and trying to inspire employees and increase their happiness in the workplace. And one day I heard from a colleague when I was grabbing a cup of coffee and he asked me this weirdest question that helped me to question myself and start my journey. He said, what's wrong with you? You can't be always happy. And I was like, nothing is wrong with me. Something is wrong with you and everything, who, everyone who is thinking in, the, in that way. This is me. And I realized I don't belong to the corporate life. I don't belong to where I was. And I started soul searching who I am and what I need to do in this life. And I met neurolinguistic programming which helps you to find your authentic self, basically. If you use it in the right way and learn all the tools and really do the work for you, work on yourself, then you will find what you re really made of and who you really are, your authenticity. And that's how it started. After that, when I became a professional life coach and an NLP master practitioner and speaker, I wanted to put myself out there. And that was the time digital marketing was just started. And I was in the United States. I moved there to discover more about NLP and myself and become the speaker. I didn't speak English before, so I had to learn because I wanted to reach more people. So in 2016, I moved to the United States with no English, no one to know, no job, just nothing but discovering what I want to do and how 
NLP was born there and how I can learn more of it. I attended lots of trainings and that's how I found digital marketing was so important for me to put myself out there. But life has different plans for us as always. When I was studying digital marketing at the University of California, my instructor, my instructors uh, were my first clients. They hired me. I want you to be my social media person. I want you to help me create my digital marketing strategy. I like your energy. I want to work with you. So I started having clients for digital marketing before having clients on, on coaching. So that's how I combined both of them. I was having both of them and enjoyed doing both of them. I still enjoy working with entrepreneurs for their digital marketing, also working with individuals for their personal growth. Yeah, that's that's really cool because it's like you said, life has different plans and it's interesting to see how the paths merge sometimes and they find their way. Now, as you're working with people, though, on on their digital marketing, on their social media, I, I would assume you run into this a lot where people could be asked that question. What's wrong with you? Right. That Which is a terrible question, um, but it's people thinking they need to conform to this box that we talked about earlier and they need to put on a certain facade to be able to show up on the internet or put themselves out there in their brand. So how do you go about unlocking their authentic self so that their their digital presence is actually a reflection of them and not a contradiction of who they really are? What I realized over the past seven, eight years of working with entrepreneurs and mostly uh, speakers and people like you, consultants, they never share their own story. They put another mask. They hide their struggles, kind of. They just want to show the shiny, happy life that they have, which they worked so much to have it. And once they forget their story, that's when they're out of track because you should never forget where you have come from. You've come so far, we have to remember where did you come and why you started your journey. So I always start working with my clients with a bunch of coaching questions. I sent them those questions and I want them to sit down and answer every single thing, their short-term goal, long-term goal, but mostly why they started their company, what's their passion besides money. I help them to forget money for a while and focus on why they do what they do. Because if your why is not strong enough, then you shouldn't be doing the entrepreneurship. And let me tell you the second why on my brand, joy. It is with two whys. And the second why has a lot of meaning behind. It's your why. It's your purpose, your passion, why you created that company. Because you could have stayed in that nine to five job, right? Why did you do that? If you're not passionate what you do, then there's no point for you to do you can just have a comfortable life and have an income at a certain date of every month and you can live life in that frame and you can be happy. And don't get me wrong, there are so many people happy in that frame. They love that life and that's fine. But if you're an entrepreneur, you have that you you don't have that choice. You have to own your story and stop being afraid of sharing it. So I start with my clients to share their story first. And they all feel, oh my God, how am I gonna share my struggles? How am I gonna share what I did to get, get this point? But I show them and they receive lots of feedbacks from their, their subscribers or their clients, their followers. Once they share their story, they receive lots of vulnerable messages and appreciation from their clients because they feel connected to them and feel more inspiration and motivation from their story 
and that will help them to pursue their own goals and dreams. So that's that's what I do. I push my clients out of their comfort zone and and share their story, their real story. Mm. I I so love this. I am absolutely convinced that the reason most small businesses fail is because they forget that their why. And it, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with small business failure rates. It's upwards of 94% in 10 years, which is crazy to me that we let 94% of dreams and solutions to problems just die because we choose to forget why we started in the first place. And then I actually heard just this morning, I was listening to an audiobook, and um, I heard the definition of an entrepreneur is somebody that takes on a problem that isn't theirs because they believe that they have a solution for it. And I think that's so powerful, but but we forget the why. And it's ironically at what if in the harmonious architecture, we start there with our clients as well. The N is actually where we start. It's navigate. If you don't have the, the path or the compass of why you exist and how you want to get to your destination, you will fail. We, we've seen it time and time again with, with other people. I so love that you start there with your clients. And I wish just if you take nothing else from this episode, just please remember your why. It, write it down. Do something to where you can wake up every day and take that with you. And remember when it's in good times and in bad times, you started this company for a reason. You started this mission for a reason. Yes. And there is a purpose behind it. I I really, really love that you start there. So um, I'm curious then, we have our why. You help your clients find your why, their why. Um, what do you, where do you typically go from there into unlocking their authentic selves? Because that's obviously a very good, uh, it's a foundational place to start. But then the un unleashing of, of who they really are into the world can still be a scary step. So how do you give people that very last push before they step out into the real world? Breaking the social norms. That's the next hard thing to do because still even we are entrepreneurs we still have some sort of corporate rules i remember when i was in corporate world i i told you like i was always joyful and i was writing emails with smiley faces with stars on the subject line and you know and sending those to everyone in the company like 300 and 400 people will receive that email right because i'm i was in hr so i was when i was making announcement or sending something they all will see it so i have to be more careful so whenever i send emails my boss would come from her room and she'll say you used to start again you use the smiley face that's not professional and i was like it might not professional in in your way but there's not nothing wrong to send smiley face and spark people's eyes you know when you when you see a smiley face everyone will have some sort of smiling on their face or or having a star this is just a simple example that i experience so in entrepreneur life we still have certain rules when we create a social media post, I've seen this in my clients a lot. Oh, that's so girly color. I can't use that color or I can't use that font or I can't have that language. It doesn't look professional, but it is professional. What you do is important. And what's important is that you need to share your message in your own language. If you're a person, who is very serious and never laugh, then you probably shouldn't use smiley face because that's not you. But if you're somebody who loves wearing colors and who loves connecting people, you should probably use a language which is more friendly and you, know, you have to connect more with people and you have to be on camera. If you're somebody who doesn't love to speak, or cannot speak in a way that you can attract your ideal clients, then you should probably not speak. You should probably write blog. So I send my clients in their own way on digital marketing. They like to be on everywhere, 
but they shouldn't be on everywhere. You can't be everywhere on social media. It will, it will drive you crazy, first of all, because it, every area has lots of algorithms and they change constantly. Even since we started talking on this episode, I'm sure so many things changed on the digital world already. So you have to find your own niche, what you like, then you can pursue that in your own way. So that's what I do on the second part when I work with my clients. Yeah, you uh, you gave me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. I can't stand social media algorithms and all this other stuff because you're right, it changes constantly. And that's that's why you know, when working with our clients, you, I think you hit it perfectly. And that's why I'm so excited about this episode. When we talk about the you and Harmonious, it's ubiquity. It's not being all things to all people in all places. It is just being everywhere your ideal clients expect you to be and being constantly present there as yourself, which people get so, so wrong because they're trying to shake their butts on TikTok and then post pretty pictures on Instagram and then show off their kids on Facebook. And it's like, you can't do this because you're not all of these separate things. You're one being that needs to be authentically you. This is this is such a powerful message. Now, I put your website on the screen. Um, we do have to wrap this episode up, unfortunately. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, and I hope you are as the listener, too. So make sure you subscribe. But where can we follow you on social media? What what can we? Um, how can we work with you and take that next step if we want to help uh, bring out our authentic self and our brand? You can reach out to me on Instagram. That's the platform I am mostly in. I pick Instagram. So it's J-O-Y-Y-B-U-R-C-U. And you can find my podcast also on Apple and Spotify called The Coffee O'Clock Podcast, where I have guests from all around the world who share their inspirational stories and expertise. And guess what? Brandon will be my guests very soon so you might want to follow that so that's pretty much it that's so awesome yeah i I appreciate the invite i am super excited to come on and and be a guest share my story with your audience i think thank you for sharing your story with with mine i think this is uh you know invaluable information really because so many people stay in their perception of the box that they need to stay in and we limit our our potential and we limit our really it's not even our potential if we look externally we limit our impact on the world and we don't serve our clients at the highest degree that we possibly can and that to me is a crime i i think this yes. is an important conversation in the mind body business soul conversation thank you for adding that you're actually the third person that has said that to me so i will add it it is now the four-legged stool of business um <laughs> thank you so much again for coming on the show this is this has been a great conversation we'll put all of the links down in the show notes wherever you're watching and listening please remember to subscribe and comment. Give us your takeaways. We want to hear them. Uh, and we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.